hello and welcome to Right Now for Friday the 17th of November 2017, I'm Tim Wilms. Following the overwhelming yes response of 61.6% in the Australian Marriage Law Postal Survey, legislation has already been introduced into the Senate, which is sitting this week by Liberal Senator Dean Smith. Due to the size of the yes victory, fellow Liberal James Patterson is not introducing his alternative same-sex marriage bill. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull and other senior government ministers have repeatedly stated they want the legislation passed before Christmas. Labor and the Greens have agreed to this timeline, however they will not agree to what they see as a winding back of anti-discrimination laws. What we are likely to have in the eventual legislation, as what Conservative of the members of the government have indicated, they will accept at the very least, is protection for free speech and parental rights over education, but given the pressure is on the government to pass the legislation, legislation, opportunities for amendments will be limited. The breakdown of the survey results has proven a bit more awkward than Labor and the left was expecting. The highest no votes were recorded in the Labor heartland of Western Sydney, with nine Labor seats recording overwhelming no votes. Everybody was quick to highlight these areas have high ethnic and migrant communities, which would have accounted for the high no vote. It has certainly shatters the leftist perception that the twin goals of multiculturalism and LGBT rights can coexist in a Western country. It also puts these Labor MPs in Western Sydney, most of whom are front benchers and who have already pledged their support for same-sex marriage in an awkward position when it comes before a vote in the Parliament. One of the more humorous events in the aftermath of the survey result was Defence Industry Minister and Leader of the House Christopher Pine's Twitter account liking gay porn. Pine claims his Twitter was hacked. His longtime political enemy, Senator Cory Bernardi, has used this event to try and embarrass Pine by calling for an inquiry into the national security implications of a government minister's Twitter account being hacked. Of course, the reality of this situation is that Pine, who is a same-sex marriage supporter, was probably parting hard with his staff that night, and most likely one of them, when quite drunk, did this to his account as an ill-fated joke. We don't need to waste taxpayer resources on an episode like this, and Labor has said they will not support an inquiry, and instead we should just laugh it off. Despite the vote happening in Australia, the world still turned and one bit of international news that has been overlooked is that the military of Zimbabwe has staged a coup against that nation's president of 37 years, 93-year-old Robert Mugabe. Mugabe had run the nation's economy into the ground, violently displaced white farmers, persecuted his political enemies and corruption was rampant in his government. Mugabe is currently under house arrest and transition talks are now in place to see him peacefully cede power. His demise is a welcome development, however it is unclear whether his replacement will see any reversal of that nation's plunder. Opposition leader Morgan Sangurai has returned. People have raised concerns about army chief and leader of the coup, Constantino Chengua. He's linked to Beijing, but if those links is what led, led to uh, Mugabe's uh, final demise, then who really cares? Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe, and check back here soon to see what is happening right now then.